Hello and welcome to the Dragonfly Daily. I am your host, Mike, the product manager of Dragonfly. Welcome to today's lesson. It's going to be lesson number eight. Please continue to enjoy Dragonfly Daily. And if you want to follow us, you can find uh, me at Dragonfly Wizard on Twitter. And of course, there is also ORS Dragonfly 3D is the company on Twitter. So today's lesson in Dragonfly Daily will be on ROI tools. So hit the subscribe button if you're watching this on YouTube. And today's lesson will be used with Dragonfly 4.1. We're using sort of a slightly tailored Dragonfly 4.1 experience based on the customization that we provided in lesson six. So let's dive right in. We will be talking about ROI tools. We're gonna to be using two different data sets today. We're gonna to be looking at a 2D SEM image of sandstone, and this we will find in the Digital Rocks portal. This comes from uh, Yufu Niu in University of New South Wales. Yufu is, uh, I believe, a member of Ryan Armstrong's group down there. We'll also be using a 3D FibSim data set and a segmentation of mouse retina rod internal segments. These data come from Christopher Bleck at uh, uh, NHLBI. Now, the agenda for today, we're going to be looking at some basic ROI tools, like how to create a new ROI, how to clear it, invert, also undo certain operations. Well, almost any operation on ROI, you can undo the, the, the single last operation form. We'll also be looking at using the range or thresholding tool for adding and removing by manual thresholding, also automatic thresholding. We'll also be looking at how you color your ROIs, either manually or from safe template of colors. And you'll see some clipping operations, how you add and remove based on a 3D clip box. Um, also, you can uh, split an existing ROI into foreground and background. Mm, this really should be up here in this top on range. And we'll look at how you create a multi-ROI from ROIs, and then we're gonna look at two different scenarios for creating a multi-ROI, one based on materials, different materials all indexed in a multi-ROI, or different individual grains or pores or objects labeled in a multi-ROI using the connected components indexing. And there's one more topic that my screen, ah, using an ROI to mask an image. So with that said, let's go over to Google and find the data that we are gonna be using for today. So as I mentioned, you can go to Digital Rock Portal, and there we will find the uh, Yufu's uh, SEM image. So I'm gonna go to Digital Rocks Portal, I'm gonna go to Browse Projects, and I'm gonna scroll down. It's uh, down here, Digital Rock Segmentation from Yufu. You can click the View Project, and this is an, there is a micro CT and an SEM of this North Sea Sandstone. So if you click on Original and Segmented, you can uh, grab this image right here. It's a 25 megabyte, uh, 25 megabyte SEM image. So you can just download and that's what we're going to be using today. The second data set that we will use today is this mouse retina data set. So if you Google ORS Dragonfly and you visit the Dragonfly landing page, again under learn, under sample data sets, you'll have a new object right here. So this is, the, this is what we used in yesterday's lesson. These are some objects we used in lessons one through five. And so for today, lesson eight, you'll find a new data set here uh, on the mouse retina internal, uh, rod internal segments, uh, thanks to Christopher Platt. All right, now I'm gonna go over to Dragonfly. I'm gonna click the new session button to clear out what I was answering during Q&A earlier. So new session gives us a fresh start. All right, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to import uh, both of those two data sets. I'm going to start with the SEM. So I'm going to go to import image files, uh, go to add, and here in my downloads, I have this SEM image right here. Now, I am not certain about this, but I'm pretty sure that the horizontal field of view in this image is 2.5 millimeters, and that works out to be 0 0.41 microns or 410 nanometers per pixel. So I'm just gonna key in 0 0.41, 0 0.41, and 0 0.41. And uh, this, maybe I'll just rename it here, North Sea Sandstone, SEM, and click Finish. So this is 6,100 pixels by 6,100 pixels. It's just a 2D image, so you don't see anything showing up in here. I mean, actually, technically, if you zoomed in enough, you would see a very thin slice uh, corresponding to this. But I'm just going to click the reset button here. Now we're also going to go ahead and import the other data set. I'm going to click this button to import from ORS objects. And I'm going to scroll up here is the file that you'll be able to download later today, mouse retina rod internal segments FibSim. 
this data set as an overlay, a multi-ROI, and the image channel itself. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. This is not the full uh, FibSim data set that was collected. Rather, it is a, a sub-volume, but it's enough to work with and use. And uh, as I mentioned, these data, uh, these data on the mouse rod internal segments, they were imaged on a FibSim, by FibSim on a Zeiss Crossbeam 540 at the electron microscopy core facility at NHLBI. So thank you to Christopher and coworkers in that core facility for generously sharing these data and making them available for all of you to download and work with and experiment and learn how to do better image segmentation. The image segmentation provided here, um, we'll look at this a little bit today. This is all done. This is a part of an automatic multi-phase segmentation, but I just extracted uh, one version of the mitochondria segmentation out. It happened to be encoded in a multi-ROI. So we'll look at that in a few minutes. Let's look at the 2D SEM image. I'm gonna double click um, to go out and then double click to go full screen here. So here we're looking at an SEM image. Now image segmentation, of course, is labeling all of the different pixels in the image, maybe not all the pixels, but the pixels of interest. So if we were concerned with porosity, we would wanna label the pore space pixels. If we were interested in quartz fraction or feldspar fraction, we would wanna label the different the different grains according to their material components. All of that is going to get started on the segment tab. As we mentioned once before, the segment tab has three panels here, segment with classifier, ROI painter, and ROI tools. So we're going to look quite a bit at ROI tools today. Now, uh, we can get started at the very beginning with the new button here. Now, important note, for most of you, 90% of the time, you'll be working with only one image channel in your workspace or maybe two image channels, but they'll be the same size. In my workspace right now, I have two different image channels. I have this 2D SEM, which is 6100 by 6100 pixels, and then I have this 3D FibSim, which is 450 by 450. When you create a new ROI, it asks for three properties. So I click new and I get this property or I get this dialog. So I'm need, going to need to give this a name and I need to give this color and then a geometry. So I get to choose from any of my existing data sets and it will adopt the same geometry. So if I wanna be able to label the pixels here in this area of my workspace, that is these 6100 by 6100 pixels, then it would be important to choose that geometry. More than 90% of the time that you're working with just one image in your workspace, there'll only be one geometry to choose from. And so you won't have to worry about this. So let's suppose I were interested in labeling the, uh, the poor space. I could give it a name and I could select and give it a color, maybe something that would look like the, uh, the epoxy if you're actually the diet and look at it on an optical microscope. So I now have a region of interest called poor space. Now, we can use different tools. Tomorrow we'll talk a lot about ROI Painter, and then we'll do some more advanced tools on, on Lesson 10. But for now, on the ROI Tools panel, we could start with thresholding. So thresholding is done with this range panel here. Now, I'm going to make sure that my North Sea Sandstone is selected. I'm gonna come over here, I'm going to click on Define Range. This, and now I'm gonna click on Show Histogram. This is the image intensity histogram for my North Sea Sandstone. If I wanted to segment the pore space, I could drag this until I had just the pore space highlighted. And then, so of course, the lowest intensity phase over here is my pores, and then I have maybe my quartz, and then maybe my, my feldspar, and then maybe uh, some of these other clays, and some of these other high uh, BSE minerals, and et cetera. So I've got lots of different phases here. Now, I'm gonna click the uh, reset button here, if I, as I just mentioned, I could do this interactively and manually select, <coughs> excuse me, manually select an intensity range. I could also click the lower or upper O2 buttons, and that will do an automatic thresholding looking at the, uh, well, it's using the O2's algorithm to try and uh, minimize the entropy of your separation between two classes. So if I click lower O2, it's gonna do an automatic segmentation and say, okay, let's call all of these pixels in this band the, the background of the low intensity phase. Uh, inversely, if I had clicked upper O2, it would select all of these, and this is trying to identify most of my actual grains. I'm gonna click reset once more, click lower, and now I will click um, this ROI, and now I can do add. So if I do add, it's gonna take all of the currently selected pixels, and it's going to associate them with my pore space ROI. 
Now, if I turn off the fine range, you can see that all, right, all of those pixels are labeled as the pore space. If I want to see it, I've got it visible. If I don't want to see it, I can turn it off. If you select it, then you'll also see down here that in the 2D opacity, there is a, a highlight. So you can adjust the, the highlight of that particular ROI. Now, um, let's look at some of the other features you could do. I could uh, click the invert button. So if I click the invert button, now I have inverted and now my ROI is all of the grains. So I could come over here and I could make a copy of this. So if I made a copy of this, I could make all my copy uh, all grains. And then I could go back to the four space and invert it back. So we just did a thresholding and, and then made a copy and inverted. And I, if I want to keep this, I can maybe give this some other color. I don't know what would contrast well with that cyan. Let's try orange. And so now I have some grains and I have some pore space. Now, there are other things you can do here. So we showed that you could use the define range and you could add to a selected ROI. You could also remove from a selected ROI. So let's hide this for a second. Let's suppose we wanted to come in here and we wanted to, let's say we wanted to remove everything that wasn't quartz. We could try and do this maybe, you know, somewhere around here. We might make the evaluation, use the middle mouse to zoom in. Maybe we'll put it right here. We may say, okay, all of these grains are not quartz. So maybe I would like to remove those from the all grains ROI. So if I have this and I have selected this interval, I could come and click remove and then I can undo and we can see now that I've removed uh, all of uh, some of these. Well, I've removed some clays and I've removed um, some of the feldspar, maybe not everything. So you could do that my uh, subtraction operation. Now, if you did an operation like that and you want to go back to where you are, uh, were, you could just click the undo button and it's going to undo that last action on that selected ROI. So it undid the remove. Okay. So uh, you have a pretty good idea of over here on define range, you have a pretty good idea of what add does and what remove does. You can also, when you're getting started, you could just click add to new. So uh, even if you don't even have an ROI selected or an ROI, you can reset this and or reset here, click the upper O2, for example, and click add to new. And now we'll have a, an ROI, which is just all of our, uh, everything that was current, that was selected at that time. So in this case, this is identical to all grains. So that's add, that's remove, that's add to new. I don't need this ROI, so I'm just gonna select it and click the delete button. Okay, I think that's most of what we need to see, at least for now, on the defined range, uh, or on the range panel. Now, I will go on and talk about, uh, what was I gonna, oh, yes. So you can also do another way of evaluating the O2 algorithm. So in this case, I was evaluating the O2 over the entire histogram of the image. But suppose I was interested in evaluating it on the histogram of just an ROI. Let me show you what I mean. So I have this. Suppose some of these grains are brighter and some are darker, and I would like to split them on the histogram of just that ROI. So for example, if I come over to all grains and I look at its properties panel because I've selected it, I can ask for the histogram of just this ROI and I could ask it to do a split. I don't know, maybe it would split here or split here, whatever again uh, minimizes the entropy. What you could do is you can take all grains and over here at towards the bottom, you will find an operation under data set operations where you could say split at O2. It's gonna take all my grains and it's gonna set them in it's going to split them into the bright grains and the dark grains or the foreground and the background. When you do this, it has to know what image channel it should be evaluating for those intensities because the grains ROI itself is just a bunch of labels, pixels that are labeled and pixels that are not labeled. In order for it to do this evaluation, it needs an image channel or it needs image intensity histogram to evaluate. In this case, the image intensity of the SEM image where all the pixels mark all grains. So what I do is I select all grains. I make sure that North Sea Sandstone is selected and then I click split at O2. So it looks, it computes the entire histogram for that data set like the one we saw a minute ago and then it splits it into foreground and background. So you can see here, the background is all of the grains that are not so bright and the foreground is the brighter grains. So let's suppose uh, this was my feldspar and my 
uh, uh, clays and, and other. And this was my quartz. So I could come over here and rename this quartz. And I'll give this, I don't know if there's any color conventions, but I'll make this orange. And now I've got three phases labeled. Now what I could do is I could take the, the feldspar clays and quartz and I could split that again. And so that would split it. This sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Depends on how clean your image is and really what the histogram looks like. So this is now split into this, which is maybe some feldspar and maybe some, maybe some kaolinite. I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not a geologist. And uh, here are just, just some clays. So I could rename this uh, clays. Maybe I rename this uh, feldspar and kaolinite. And I no longer need this because this is really just a union of these two. So I could delete that. And now I have, uh, let's see, multiple materials here. And so let's say, I don't like those colors. Um, maybe it's just because of this bright blue or maybe it doesn't matter, but actually let's, let's take this uh, the yellow. Which one's the yellow? Oh, all grains that show. I don't need that one. Let's get that out of there. All right. So, we have this and we have these names and these colors. Now, we've named these individually, we've set the colors individually, but let's suppose you're constantly processing SEMs and you're constantly labeling mitochondria and nuclei of biological samples, or you're constantly looking at images like this of rock and you're always labeling the same minerals. And you'd like to have some consistency in your nomenclature and in your coloring mechanism. Something you can do is you can select all of these and you can right click and do save as template. And I could call this my SEM grains, uh, let's say minerals, uh, minerals and click okay. Now, the reason that's useful is if I am work later working on a data set and I want to start a segmentation, Instead of creating these and naming them and selecting the colors, I can go under templates and say load a template, and say SEM minerals, and say yes, this is the geometry, and then it will populate uh, these blank ROIs at the top with the right color and the right name, and so you can get to work and start uh, segmenting, and you know that you're using a consistent naming and color system all the time. All right, those are just empty ROIs ready for me to get to work, but I don't need them right now, so I'll delete them. Um, I do, let's see. Was there something else I wanted to mention on this? Mm, that's probably okay for now. So let's look at some of the other features on ROI tools. We'll just uh, set this aside by hiding it for now. I'm going to look at, we'll hide the sandstone, I'm going to look at the rod internal segments and the mitochondria data for a few minutes. All right, so this is what it looks like in 2D. Uh, here is my data in 3D. As we saw in an earlier lesson, if you take a multi or an ROI, you can click on 3D, and then now you'll see the coloring here. I'll double click to go full screen. So I do have this ability to turn up the highlight uh, of this, uh, this multi roy or I can turn down the intensity um, and see, still see sort of the texture of the image of the ROI. So here we, we're, we're losing a lot of the texture. Here we're seeing the texture. And so that's the difference of, of highlight versus the ROI. So this is this multi-labeling of ROIs. If I were to right click and go into connected components analysis, then here we see that it's several different mitochondria ROIs and we can uh, look at each one of them individually. So I also uh, computed a measurement of size already. So if I go to here and choose scalar values and volume, click OK. It's a, a previously computed measurement, then it shows up here. So I could uh, sort by volume and, uh, and if I want to fade this, recall that I can fade the intensity here. So we're seeing the different ROIs and they're, you know, they're, uh, these ROIs, this ROI of mitochondria is all yellow because it's all interconnected. It's not all inter interconnected into sub-volume, but if you had the entire volume, you'd see that they're all connected together. So you can use this for interrogating different individual mitochondria and understanding how they're connected. Now, this is a multi-ROI, and so that really begs the question of how do you go from a multi-ROI to an ROI? 
or from an ROI to a multi ROI. So let's talk about that briefly. We'll do this once for the mitochondria and then once for the SEM because they're, they're two uh, rather different applications. So let's start with the mitochondria. This is a multi ROI. If in in your workflow, you'll probably not start with a multi ROI, but start with an ROI. So, in order to get to that position where that is, have it as an ROI, I'm just going to right click and choose new ROI. So, I have this ROI, uh, which may, maybe if you started with a 2D, sorry, if you started with a segmentation of just the mitochondria, then you might have something like this. Now, if I wanted to make an ROI, a multi ROI from this, where this mitochondrion is separate from this mitochondrion is separate from this mitochondrion, then you can right click on the mitochondria and go to connected components, new, or sorry, go to connected components, multi ROI analysis. This will index all of the mitochondria. And so now there, now we want to turn off the visibility on this one, turn on the 3D of the new one we just computed. And now we have, let's see, and here ah, it's set to grayscale so i'm just going to give it maybe this one for now so each of these mitochondria that are connected are colored the same color or the same index that is how you create a multi roy where you have in this case 407 discrete objects where each object is an is a separate object not touching another so that's that touching or that connection is identified by the connected components indexing algorithm and so that's what we do by right clicking on our roi and doing connected components um, and analysis. So it not only creates the multi roi it also uh, launches it directly in the, in the analysis menu. Now, if we, we can look at a separate idea of a multi roi so this was indexing objects based on connectivity. Now, if we revisit the sandstone example, and we have these ROIs, whoops, not the mitochondria, but the clays, the feldspar, the quartz, and the pore space, Suppose I wanted to encode all of this in a single multi ROI. What you would do is you would just uh, shift click to select all of them, right click and choose create multi ROI from ROIs. This will create a single multi ROI. And in 4.1, you do not get to set the individual colors of each material phase, but that changes in 2020.1. So you'll see that um, here in a few weeks. Now, I have a multi ROI here, and I do not have this grain as indexed separate from this grain as separate from this grain. Rather, I have four materials encoded in my multi ROI one material for all of the pore space, one material for all of the quartz, one for all of the clays, et cetera. So if I right click on the multi ROI and I go into uh, connected components, is where I find the analysis. So this opens up my analysis, and here are the four materials. And so if I uh, turn down and I select the top one, okay, so that's uh, my clays, and there's my feldspar, and there's my quartz, and there's my pore space. So uh, also if I were to do, for example, compute volume, or we're actually, if this is a 2D image, we're gonna use this thing called surface area Z over two. We're not gonna get into this right now, but this is gonna compute the surface area of each fraction. And do I want surface area? Yeah, I think that's the one I want. And this is going to give me an area fraction. So now I know the area of each of these materials. So this is different from saying what's the grain size distribution. This is really about phase fraction. So I want to know what's the fraction of my, of my pore space or the fraction of my quartz, et cetera. So again, you can't change the individual colors that show up here in 4.1, but that becomes much more friendly in 2020.1, the addition soon. You can change the lookup table that's being used here. So you, you do have uh, that ability and you could use one of these discrete lookup tables. And I think I showed uh, at the beginning how you could edit that discrete lookup table. Or maybe that was a Q&A that was offline. So that is one way of creating a multi roi Now, um, so two different multi roys one based on merging a bunch of materials. So you have a, a multi-material multi roi and the other was uh, independently uh, connected component indexed multi roi Now, I do want to show one or two other things. Let's look at the masking operation. So I'm going to go back to my mitochondria example, and I'm going to choose this mitochondria ROI. Suppose I needed an image for some reason. Some people like to do this. Uh, suppose I needed an image which was just the mitochondria and everything else was blanked out. 
Now in 3D rendering, I can't always choose the mitochondria and I come down to the 3D opacity and I could turn down highlight and then I could turn down data set. And now everything that's not a mitochondria is faded to zero. You don't have that capacity in 2D. It hasn't changed the image. The image is still there. It's just changing what's, what's rendered on screen. Now, suppose you did want to change the image in memory. You wanted to zero out everything. That's not hard at all. I can take my mitochondria. I'm actually going to do an invert operation. And, and now I'm going to say, take all the pixels that are red. So these are all my non-mitochondria pixels. And I'm going to choose over here under data set operations. I'm going to say, I want to use my selected ROI. That's mitochondria. And I want to overwrite all of those red pixels in this data set. So you do have to select what data set. I click overwrite and I say I want to overwrite it with intensity zero. You, there's no undo for this. You're modifying an image channel. Now, um, it applies the operation and now I click invert. Uh, don't see any difference. What did I do wrong? Black invert and overwrite North Sea Sandstone SEM with value zero. Mm -hmm. ah. <laughs> that was completely silly of me. I'm, I, I select North Sea Sandstone. Of course, this is the rod internal segments. So let's select this one, overwrite, click zero. There we are. So um, it overwrites. Now, if I, I go back and I invert this, so it's back to where it was, and I turn this off, you can see that everything has been masked out. So you can use the ROI as an image mask. All right. So. You can also create a mesh from an ROI. So if I wanted to take this mitochondria and turn it into a mesh, I could come down here and say export as mesh and choose uh, normal or uh, subsampled or cubic. I don't want to do this operation right now because I think it'll take more than a couple of minutes. I don't want to just sit here and wait around on it, but you can uh, create a mesh that way. Now, I did say I would mention something a little bit here about using the clip box. I'm going to do that very quickly now. Um, when you are doing segmentation, you can also add objects by not just their threshold, but by their position with the clip box. Let me show you what I mean. So if I create a new region of interest that is the same shape as my rod internal segments, so I've got this ROI, and then I turn on its clip box, and let's say I want to label you know, all of these pixels, I can just click add, add clipped region, and it's going to label all of those pixels are now associated. So um, I could also uh, remove, so I could pick some zone here and remove the clip box uh, like as such. Now you can also do a clear and that's gonna clear. So that adds or removes uh, inside your ROI based on where the clip box is set. You could also do this based on an intensity range. So if I only wanted some very bright pixels, for example, I could set an intensity range and instead of adding everything in the intensity range, I could add only what is in the clipped region. And as long as defined range is checked, it'll only add these pixels. So you see these pixels are labeled. These pixels are all labeled and these outside the clip box are not. So this is not a very good example of, of that, but you can you, you could probably imagine cases where you might use it. I think I will save the fill inner areas and the interpolate for uh, lesson, uh, lesson nine on uh, ROI Painter. I think it'll be more, more useful to look at those topics then. All right, I think that's enough. So we did see uh, most of the ROI tools over here, particularly with thresholding and the, and the basic tools. And we saw also how to create multi-ROIs and uh, create ROIs, convert between ROIs and multi-ROIs, ROIs and multi-ROIs. So with that, I am going to switch over and take questions from today's lesson. So starting with the question at the top of my queue, is there a region growing algorithm to create ROIs? So that's a great question. So in terms of region growing, there is both the ability to uh, grow regions in 2D using ROI Painter, so we should look at that tomorrow, and there is a watershed algorithm. Don't think we'll look at the watershed algorithm, but it's there, so that's a more complicated discussion, but the, both of those are, are region growing. Uh, in, in case of the, the one on the ROI Painter, it is, uh, in 2D mode, this is a region growing tool. So maybe we'll look at that tomorrow. Okay, um, next question. Is there any possibility for a three-phase Otsu split? So um, that's a great question. There's not right now. Um, 
if you find the literature reference, that's probably very easy for us to add. It's not certainly not described in Otsu 1978 or whenever the Otsu paper was written, but I'm sure people have, have done histogram-based multi, multi-phase uh, separations. There is in the image processing toolbox, which we'll look at on lesson 11 and 12, there is a K-means, which is, allows you to do three or four or five phases based on intensity. It doesn't happen in ROI tools, it happens in the image processing toolbox, so uh, I'll see if we can look at that in that lesson. Can we focus different ways of creating regions before measuring and splitting them? Um, well, uh, so today was about ROI tools. Tomorrow we'll look at painting tools so we can look at more precise ways of editing the regions of interest before we make any movements on them. Another question, please go through the segmentation steps used for the mitochondria. Well, the, all of the mitochondria that you saw segmented today were done automatically with a deep learning algorithm. So we painted uh, maybe three slices of data, trained a model, um, I think now you could actually just paint one slice of data, train a model, and then have it automatically segment all other 1,200 slices. So deep learning is being covered in week four, so stay tuned for the deep learning lessons. Uh, those will be lessons uh, 15, 16 through 20. There's another question. How do we analyze the single ROI to view surface area, volume, et cetera, look just like we would do in objects analysis for a multi-ROI? Well, that's a great question. If I have an ROI over here, so we did see that if I select a multi-ROI, I can always right click and go to analysis. So that is uh, how you would make uh, all of these measurements. So these measurements that can be done on a multi-ROI. If you want to make measurements on a ROI that is not a multi-ROI, the measurements you have as an option. So if I select ROI, you can look in the properties panel and here you're able to compute surface to get surface area and you get volume is automatically reported here. You do not have the other measurements available um, on a single ROI. However, if you need those measurements, you can just convert this uh, to a single multi-ROI just by right-clicking and uh, saying new multi-ROI, you know, create multi-ROI from ROI. Even though it'll only have one material, then you can make all those measurements and it'll, it'll be a table with all of the measurements. There'll be only one row on the table. All right, let's take another question. Were the mitochondria segmented using threshold or manually? So neither. In this case, they were segmented using a deep learning. So it was done all automatic. Certainly you could not separate, do, do biological samples like this by simple thresholding. All right, next question. Can we change the geometry of an ROI once it's created? Oh yeah, that's a great question. So you can, um, you can, you can crop it or you can use resample. So if I right click and I go to modify and transform and I choose resample geometry, if you have another geometry, we're not going to look today at how you would make another geometry, but let's say you have a bigger box, uh, you could project this multi-ROI into a bigger box, and the bigger box could be a different shape, it could, or it could be a, a box with different dimensions or different pixel size, but you would just choose resample geometry and then choose the target geometry. Um, and so, and your ROI does not have to be the same pixel size. In fact, in the case that I have here, this is going to be posted on the website later today, the data set is like four nanometer pixels or maybe eight nanometer pixels and the ROI is on two nanometer, sorry, they're on different scales. So one's a, like an eight nanometer pixel and the other's a four nanometer pixel. So they don't have to be the same. So next question, um, how do you remove background from an ROI? Mm, remove background. Uh, I don't understand the question. You can always threshold uh, the interval that you think may be background and do, but uh, maybe you have to ask, ask a more specific question offline. Can you limit the range that the O2 algorithm works on? No, uh, it applies to the entire intensity histogram. We could look at that. Uh, interesting point for discussion. You may want to restrict the range that's evaluated. On. Certainly wouldn't be hard for us to add. We would just have to decide how to make that available as a intuitive user interface. Wow, look at the time. Let me take two more questions and uh, call it a day. Can you go through the Boolean operations that you conduct on ROIs? Um, yes, and that is in the lesson 10 advanced segmentation. So we will look at union intersection, remove intersected, we'll look at mask, and we will look at union intersect, uh, mask, uh, sub logical subtraction. All right, one more question. Why do you prefer the histogram with log, log, logarithm Y? Um, sure, well, because 
in image intensity in image in in images let's let's go to main so and let's look at the north sea sandstone so often with images you have a peak that's very very much higher than everything else so the air peak for example if i turn off logarithm you can see this peak and this peak, but you don't see really much of the, of the contributions from here. I don't know, it's a preference. Uh, you can, if you don't like seeing this, you can always turn it off. All right, well, thank you for all of your questions. So please uh, feel free to email or post questions to forums. Uh, thank you for your attention. So again, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, hit the like button for today and also hit the subscribe so that you can be informed when the next one goes posted online. Or you can follow us on Twitter and we'll try and make announcements on Twitter when they go online. So thank you everyone. See you tomorrow for lesson eight, ROI Painter. No, lesson tomorrow is lesson nine, ROI Painter. See you then. Have a good day. Stay healthy, everybody.